Hi everyone, my name is Kevin Alui. I'm the co-founder and co-CEO of Gojek. You're listening to Go Figure, Work From Home Special Edition. Through this podcast, I'm going to discuss with various Gojek leaders and personalities what goes on behind the scenes of navigating a global organization. Today, we will take you down memory lane with one of our most beloved leaders who also witnessed Gojek's journey from a small call center to the global tech company it is today. In this episode, I'm sitting down with my co-CEO, Andres Solistio, and Gojek's outgoing Chief Technology Officer, Ajay Gur. So Ajay, welcome uh, to your final podcast uh, uh, with, uh, with, with Gojek. Um, how do you feel? How do you feel, man? Like this is it. This is their. This is your last. What two weeks? Two weeks at the company. Uh, how's uh, how's everything been going for you? So this week has been amazing. This is Wednesday today, um, and I'll tell you this. I think what we should do for one thing which I learned, what we should do for employees mm-hmm. is that um, uh, decompress, like mental decompress, permanent. Like like a compulsory mental decompress program for our employees, especially the senior leadership. Uh, at least five days where they do not have to respond to anything. I think that is the feeling I am at right now for the last three days, where I do not have to respond to anybody. Um, I will rarely get a Slack ping about how are you doing, Ajay. Uh, and I don't get asked any questions, so I don't have to prepare for anything. For example, yesterday was the first staff meeting which I missed. Uh, earlier staff meeting, I would think about what should I ask or what people are asking. Should I prepare something? I don't have to. And it's a good and bad. So I have a little bit of FOMO over there saying, uh, yeah, mm, what is going on? But on the other hand, it is a it is a very, very different feeling where you do not have to think about. For example, right now we are in this podcast, all of us, and I do not have to worry about my next meeting and we can talk very freely. And that's a good feeling to have. I wish we could have generated that within Gojek in early days as well. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a feeling. That is a bittersweet feeling I have. Um, and I think it's a lesson for all of us. But I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling much more relaxed. Uh, you know, all of us here have like probably, you know, highlights uh, uh, and different ones. Uh, you, What are the things that, you know, were what particularly stood out for you, uh, things you're proud of, regrets you might have, cool moments that you will take forever, you know, any of those things. Okay. Um, so there are some moments all of us have, which are like ninja feeling, right? Like I, I got this and it's not going to go wrong. So that, those are, there are few moments of those. For example, uh, I will never forget the go-kart moment. Um, <laughs> I will never forget that. Like that whole, that whole, like 10 o'clock morning onwards. I, I think it was 10.30 in the morning since that time, 10, 10.30. Till the time next day, evening, 6 p.m. Um, I could not sleep. Uh, but it was, I was not worried. I was excited. Like what is going to happen? What's going to happen? And uh, what hey, did we do? you should what probably tell on? our listeners. You should tell our listeners what the go-kart moment is. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, early 2016, uh, we decided to launch GoCar, and the date was set was 16th of April, I think so. And um, while we are doing all the stuff, we used to publish our Android builds. All that stuff was good, and somebody, one of our good developers, clicked the wrong button. Instead of saying going into beta mode, it went to publish mode. And once you go to publish mode, you can't roll back. So they ended up publishing GoCar um, as a as a feature. And we were supposed to do all this testing and everything else that day. And I remember Sudhanshu was flying from India to do that. Uh, Chris, who was, who was our Gokar PM that point of time, it was his birthday. Uh, and I was working for the first uh, Go Points and GoPay uh, code review meeting. So I was there in that. So it happened around 9.30, 10. I got a call from Nadeem saying, hey, what is your view on releasing GoCard today? And I said, like, um, no, we should not. We should do testing. And he's like, it's already released. Now you figure out what you want to do next. And I remember we were near <laughs> Kemang office. 
we are we are Kemong office. It has it has like offices across the street, and there is like it is sun. And I remember me and the Ranjan Sidhu were standing in the sun outside in front of Bay Country. I remember that. Uh, it was on other side. It was call on Nadim and Kevin were on the call, and we were figuring out what the hell is. And Kevin Nadim asked me this question, saying, "What can go wrong?" And we are like totally clueless at what can go wrong. We don't know what can go wrong, right? We have never even done this thing. And that was the proudest moment that nothing went wrong. Yeah, we had operational hitch, operational glitches, and we hiccups, all this stuff, but nothing went wrong. Very proud moment for me as a team. And one of the best thing was that first time I saw the founders who did not lose school, and that was another proud moment for me. Um, like uh, I had, which is also a rarity. Downtime. It's very rare. I can tell you. Uh, I can tell you that uh, every time the downtime will happen, um, Nadim will call me and Kevin will call me. But during the downtime, they will never ever ask me two questions saying when is going to get fixed, and they'll always tell me and my team saying, "Okay, take your time, fix this, and then we'll get introspect." That's like a really good thing. Uh, we rarely lost pool, so that is my second post crowd moment. Um, we haven't uh, lost school in front of people. We haven't got upset. Uh, we know we dealt with problems maturely. My second proudest moment is like we walked as a team, and that is like really good. Um, but yeah, that was a go car moment. It, it I still feeling very nostalgic about it. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, we pulled it off. I think it was sheer luck. It has nothing to do with our skills. <laughs> and most people don't know that, right? That 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 this uh, what what is today a multi billion dollar business was launched by an accident, actually. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was an accident, it started as an accidental launch when someone maybe in a sleepy uh, 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 all-nighter clicked on the wrong button. Yeah, because we are releasing that, we are, we, are, we are approaching the release date, so it was supposed to be released two days back, later. And now actually it was supposed to be in alpha or beta for the next two weeks, and we just launched it two weeks ago. It might just be an accident where like uh, some, some book drops on an enter button. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Or could wrong be. click. It was wrong click. It was wrong click. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that was it, right? I think, I think when, when you asked him what happened, uh, uh, the engineer uh, said something like, oh, I misread the text or, or the, button, the other button looks similar. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or, or something like that. <laughs> he did not understand which one to click on, so he cl he thought it was like published to published to internal users and then published. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah, dude. It was yeah, crazy. That's nostalgic. That's nostalgic. nostalgic yes. for sure. Simple times. <laughs> Very simple times. <laughs> Um, uh, and you know, speaking of you know the, the, those simple times, you know, I, I think a lot of people don't know the story of how you ended up in Gojek. Uh, you know, how, how did you know how how did your kind of how did events in your life kind of bring you here? Uh, oh. Because it's pretty random that you know uh, 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 someone you know from from India with with deep roots uh, in technology in India and and, and in the U.S. Uh, and all over the world ends up. Uh, uh, running um, the technology organization for for uh, you know Indonesia's one of Indonesia's largest technology companies. Like, uh, how did that happen? So what happened was we were running a, we were running a consulting company. Um, I think app development um, and uh, scaling the apps was two different things. So what I was doing in my startup was scaling the apps um, and automation. And what Sidhu and his company C42 was doing was like development of the app. Now we combine these two companies so you get a complete full stack mix, right? So we did that. We launched Codebunk um, late 2014, and then we went to a bunch of companies, and they, somehow we ended up getting introduced to two Indonesian companies, and one of them was Gojek. So before that, I worked with another Indonesian company, and then I worked with Gojek. And now what happens over there is um, Gojek would uh, would would struggle when you have 300 to 400 concurrent. I remember that. And it'll it'll just go down. And uh, we had the fight every day, fight right. Um, so I come and I actually like literally five years, exactly five years back, fifteenth of June. It was like fifteenth or seventh, eighth of June, and then fifteenth of June, first time we started looking at Gojek. And like actually today was the first time we are preparing to send people to um, 
Singapore, uh, Jakarta. And uh, next week, the first contingent will arrive. Actually, I know those names. Uh, <laughs> we had uh, we had a channel in Slack called Nasi Goreng for that. <laughs> because they, uh, they, lo- they loved Nasi Goreng when they came over here. The only thing they could relate to was Nasi Goreng. It <laughs> was very close to Indian fried rice as well. <laughs> so, uh, and and what happened was that we ended up coming over here and consulting. Uh, we looked at problems. It was it was it was a really it was not a complex engineering problem. It was just a just a just a logical issues which we had to weave through this. So me and Naranjan were discussing every day and what to do, and we started doing it. And then Naranjan says like there are a bunch of parts which we need to rewrite. So we started rewriting that, and then I realized that this, if we are rewriting this, is going to be longer, longer engagement with Gojek. So I start. I remember sending mail to Kevin about rates and all stuff, and we negotiated. And Kevin said, "No, this is too high," and all this stuff. And <laughs> I remember those. That was amazing emails between me, and Kevin. <laughs> Kevin was CFO then. Very few people know that Kevin was CFO in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I after five months, and I used Kevin's credit card for almost a year. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was CIMB credit card. I remember that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so we went through this stuff. After like two months, um, uh, Nadim or I think Nadim or Kevin, one of those two, went to Narendra saying, "Hey, uh, why don't you work with us?" And Narendra was like, "We, I'm, we are working with you." Like, no, 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 like permanently work with us. And um, he called me saying, "This is what they are asking for." I'm like, let's. Think through it, work through it. Um, we, we we can do it. And I was in India. I didn't travel because there was another crazy story that I don't didn't have passport at that point of time. So uh, my passport was getting renewed. Um, so we 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 talked, we discussed, and like yeah. And what happened? Uh, and we like, let's let's go ahead and do it. Then what happened during that time? It was thirty. It was thirtieth August, I think so. We were upgrading your. MySQL Slave 2 database, which is still running, by the way, that server is still going on. And we wanted to move, we want to upgrade the server so that we can get better performance. We spent the entire night upgraded server, morning everything crashed. Um, nobody could reach me, so finally Mahak called my wife and she said, and he asked, where is Ajay? And she's like, she saw me uh, heads down on the desk because I was working all night, so I just passed out. She woke me up saying, I said, what happened? She's like, no, Gojek database is down. It's like that happened. We are like talking to them, getting acquired. And what they'll think that we are useless people, all this stuff. And I still remember it, it was it was it was it like Sankal. Everybody worked all nighter to pull this off. Something happened. It didn't go through. We had backup. A good thing we had backup. So I got on the call. There were like twenty five people are on the call, and I was expecting Kevin Nadim to be there and screaming at us, but no, Kevin Nadim were not there. Um, this is twenty fifteen August or September somewhere time. And I like, hmm, these guys are cool. So then we took control, did whole thing, record by 11 o'clock. Um, I was like, everything will be so pissed. I called up Nadim saying, bro, I'm sorry. He's like, yeah, happens. Make sure it doesn't happen again. And I was like, and I was like, it will happen again. And like, what do you mean? I'm like, dude, software goes down. If software can be so permanent that it won't go down, then why would you need us tomorrow? We fix everything. You go away, walk away. And software goes down. Not deliberately, but it does go down. He understood. He smiled it off, laughed it off, and went ahead. Kevin was a little bit more serious. I can tell you today. He was very serious. He's like, "Okay," I'm like, "Okay, fine." <laughs> like, done, whatever. <laughs> I, I, I gave. I remember I gave 15 minutes update to Kevin, and Kevin was like, "Okay." I was like, this, guy, this guy, I don't know, and even on phone, I have never met him, never seen him. There's no Zoom. We are not using Zoom. We are just WhatsApp calls, right? So. But that was one of those days where we thought these people are cool. They're cool. They're 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 doing some nice 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 stuff. Product is scaling day by day and going crazy. We were having like we are expecting two to three percent growth, and later on that growth became five to ten percent growth week on week. That's crazy. We have never nobody has seen that, right? And um, and I I worked all my life being consultant. So I can't tell you what all things I worked on because I can't probably say I own that. Right? I, I built that. I own that under a lot of NDAs. So when they re- reached us to us, um, so we said, we have a good chance to build a product company. They are ready to make us partners and uh, partners and part of the team who will build it. We will be able to at least say that this is core. We built this. 
and uh, that is one thing second thing was that the the team was just so humble so nice everybody uh, without a doubt the, we did not see any politics nobody was stomping on each other it's like just help 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 um and and fun uh, of course they were fun what i heard from the crazy parties near and everybody was having like they were fun like this is this is good uh, and uh, <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about that's crazy <laughs> no, no. I, i don't know what no, you're talking about that's, that's just fun party run went off <laughs> the ranger went no, off on his own i have no idea yeah. no it's not about that it's about like it's about that that um, that community thing where you can actually uh, work the whole day off and go have a meal in the evening together that thing is very important and that was there in early days of project like either somebody will stay back somebody will bring food all the crazy things not not other crazy way uh, but the the whole camaraderie was amazing right and that worked out very well so given all those three to four factors i came in i joined gojek um october 1st we said okay we'll we'll go ahead do it january by january we are part of gojek by december i was introduced december 2015 i was introduced to andre as our legal counsel who will, who will do this <laughs> didn't tell me what who andre was <laughs> <laughs> and nadim was that guy i was that yeah, guy yeah nadim was nadim <laughs> was very nadim was very what do you say that uh very uh, he won't tell me what uh, who andre is he like andre will take care of you don't worry he'll sort out <laughs> and andre did, andre did take care of us but uh, andre when he looks at the whole agreement like what the hell is this going on and uh, <laughs> but it was it was just pure pure trust and the kind of um, kind of camaraderie kind of uh, communication kind of openness uh, kind of welcoming us uh, from india uh, not speaking bahasa indonesia uh, not able to understand culture but welcoming us embracing us making and when we stayed in indonesia uh, i stayed in indonesia for like 3 years i i left, literally left my house last year somewhere in july um when i could not travel anymore it is it is amazing it is amazing like i always felt home and i still feel home at jakarta like i like if you can tell me any any place i feel very secure uh, and there are a lot of incidents happen because of that as well andre knows those but i feel secure in jakarta i feel home in jakarta which is which is which is, which is i think that was the right decision for us to do and later on i i i i took over from sharan and things went fun fun but the reason i came the the way i came to gojek was because of trust openness camaraderie all that stuff just being nice people and we wanted to work with nice people do something right and build get great products so yeah good it's like very nostalgic and very amazing hey aj um, just just kind of following up with this right i I think you know in my opinion many of the listeners here uh uh will will probably like admit that they adore you. I think you're a you're a you're a pop star or a rock star uh in that regards for the uh, engineering uh society and especially in this part of the world and stuff. So I I want I I, I kind of want to uh get a little bit deeper uh to really understand who AJ is. uh as a person right so so can i start with who aj uh was prior to joining gojek and what what that what has that person seen in his life that really made who aj was prior to joining gojek and then at later point i want to ask that same journey inside gojek uh and maybe something of the future as well when you obviously embark in this new chapter of your life so can you can you Can you run through a little bit for the, uh, yeah for all your uh, rock fans <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i think for first 10 year of my career uh, for, for first 10 years of 10 or 12 years of my career i was just uh, i think i was just not a person uh, just passionate about writing code and i think that was till till the time i joined gojek i i can tell you um till the time i joined gojek i used to say code deploy automate that was my tagline all the time and over the period of time it has changed from code deploy automate to uh ideate implement iterate uh and and that is what gojek has been to me in a in a lot of sense you know being from an engineer um to to understand that there is a constant improvement there is constant learning there is constant um 
uh, understanding of how people behave. That, that, that is one, one thing which would define me. So w- what I was before that is like crazy, right? I was like busy with my personal life. Um, I come from a very different background. I come from a very small village in India, a very small town in India. And uh, in life, uh, I had to learn everything to earn it. Uh, it was just not given on the platter, but I was super lucky to have amazing parents. Um, they gave me amazing education. So I'm, I'm, I struggled, but not a lot, not a lot. Um, and third thing which I understood is, which was around my 12 years of thought, 10 years of my previous company, is that there's a difference between what and who. Uh, so what is Ajay as a CTO? Who is Ajay as a person? What does not remain with you, but who remains with you all the time? Today, I'm not CTO of Gojek, and uh, but I'm still Ajay Gore, right? So what will come and what will go, but who will remain with you? And that is something very powerful to understand is that who will talk to a person Ajay rather than who will talk to CTO? And why would they talk to Ajay and why would they talk to CTO? A lot of people talk to you because of your position. A lot of people talk to you because you're a person. And we should always try to make an effort to make people talk to us because who we are, not what we are. And, so who are and you, Ajay? Is, Talk about that. Um, Talk about that. Who are you, Ajay? I think uh, I have to pay back a lot to community. So I'm that person. So that's why I end up helping a lot of people. Um, that also means that I, I have this feeling of not disappointing people. So I don't say no a lot, which is, which is sometimes wrong. Um, because I'm always trying to help. Sometimes, and also I'm a person who has a single uh, single side of uh, what you say, loyalty or responsibility. That means I kind of appear very brash to people who does not, um, does not, uh, who do not, uh, what do you say, uh, sign up to my thought process or my side. Which like, so suppose somebody is trying to do against something against Gojek or like trying to do something which contract, which has something a little bit signed against Gojek, I will not approve that person. Simply, very simply. Um, but I won't, I won't be confrontational. And sometimes that is really bad. So I think uh, I'm a person who wants to pay back a lot because I know that people have given me a lot, always. And I, I am the person who never forgets um, how, I'm, how come I reached where I am. And there are a lot of stepping, stepping stones, a lot of ladders and a lot of steps in, in terms of people who have helped, helped you along the way to climb, never forget those steps. So I always look back. So I'm that person um, in a lot of sense. One thing which I think uh, I have learned in Gojek is that there is a very big difference between principal, being principal and being dogmatic. Um, I think there is a fine line between the two. And I have learned that fine line in Gojek as well. Um, because, of, because of that, I think I have become much more, much more um, accepting of the fact as long as the logic is the right, instead of staying on your course, for whatever people say. So yeah, so this this five years are actually at least twenty five years for me in terms of in terms of experience. <laughs> I think it's the most expensive MBA I did, where I paid as man, paid the currency was the time. Uh, so, so I think, you know, uh, if, if I can summarize as well, uh, I think one of the, the largest character traits of, of Ajay, uh, who Ajay is as a person, not what, uh, is really about loyalty, right? I think, you know, we all felt it, uh, that, you know, uh, you, you always focus on people first. And obviously, uh, that's actually been your strongest point. I think, you know, when, when, we, come, when we become your family, it's a, it's a family mindset. Uh, you protect your family, right? So I, I think that was that was uh, amazing character traits uh, about you, IJ, and that's actually yeah you know, some one of one of the biggest legacy that you you leave uh, you leave Gojek. Uh, I think having a very strong organizational bond, uh, despite you know uh, incoming leaderships, you know all kinds of uh, uh, backgrounds and stuff like that. I think that character traits continue to be to be strong. But what are you looking forward to then? So, so if, that, if that defines the whole journey of your, uh, whatever, last 25 years or, or so, and now you're embarking into this next chapter of Ajay. So if you, if you look at the future 10 year of Ajay, 
what 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 would be that reflection be uh, in this in this journey that you wanted uh, you know to to actually you know either change or learn more or you know have a different you know some traits what's what would that be i don't know what i'm going to do next but i know what i'm not going to do next and uh, i think uh, that is something which i realize later on um uh, i was having reading a lot of good books around work life balance and all that stuff uh, one thing which came to me as a very strong proverb from confucius saying from confucius we said everybody has every person has two lives but second starts only when you realize that you have one life um also also that was one thing and second uh, i realized that if i can if i can stay with my family still so my kids um my biggest achievement regret and happiness is that my son who is who when i joined gojek was 8 years now is 13 and he almost still like my ear right now is top this baby uh and the second one was at three years now is eight years he's like demanding things so my point is you got only one life so i'm going to do three things i'm going to focus immensely on on my family i think you do that change when you when you both grow older this will hap- this happens to everybody um and people cannot understand why, why i'm doing it unless they reach my age or have like two kids and moved somewhere and all stuff so first that is one decision um that i'm going to i'm going to go do something to my kids uh in a very positive way because if i don't set an example uh then they will become like me uh like crazy guy and i don't want that me i want them to a balanced people i want them to show something so that they can follow that positive right so first thing is that second thing is um i want to be able to take care of my health um that was like literally a wet bank blanket the entire last year i think i will end up benefiting very few people i can earn a lot of money by joining somebody big or i can earn a lot of money by doing something another thing i start i can go go do startup uh, startup is a is a vocation for anybody right and it was a vocation for me for last 5 years um but i think my next vocation is about giving back to community and helping as many startups as i can so i i think or as many people as many companies i can and that's what i'm going to look forward for doing that and what would if you, you know you, as you kind of look towards uh uh you know this uh this next chapter of helping you know other founders other companies other teams um and and as you kind of you also draw on um a lot of the learning that you've had over the last um 5 6 years uh what would you say are the top you know two or three things uh that you would advise uh other companies or other teams or individuals uh uh based on what you've learned Uh, over the last couple of years a oh, lot of things um it is it is uh, see uh whatever you do uh, will be proved wrong by time and it is good to accept that it's wrong at some point of time um don't justify yourself first thing is that you took a decision it did not turn out to be good fine accept it and move on second thing is that people are your the biggest asset uh whatever you can think of if your people leave you uh things don't work and everybody has some complementary skill uh instead of focusing on their weaknesses focus on their complementary skill because focusing on somebody's weaknesses always annoys you and if you focus on weaknesses then what will happen you will get only people like you and that is not good you need to have diversity you need to have inclusivity you need to bring people who are not like you because that will allow you to have different perspectives Where, what was the biggest thing that you've changed you think over the last couple of years many things uh for example a uh, lot of people uh, get successful using tools and different different uh, processes and thought processes right um to celebrate their success as well that is the one thing i changed so when we hire somebody senior and he or junior and he hasn't been doing what we do as a practice you should look into that why they are doing it and it's true for product it's like like in product management also somebody uses some kind of metrics or some different kind of experimentation and we if we stick to our goal because we wrote this framework and everybody should follow through this only this framework maybe we'll not be able to discover something new so your dogmas your principles become other people's dogma make sure that you know that they are becoming somebody else's dogma that is one thing i learned uh, which is very important 
actually um i think all of us have these lessons right yeah i think uh i mean i i i i think for 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 anyone that's uh, been through the journey i think somehow growth and 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 speed somehow shine a spotlight on uh a lot of on, on how things work uh i think it's often you know when when the normal pace of 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 life is a little bit slower uh uh you don't realize how things work but when you have to do things quickly and when there's a lot of pressure uh and when things are growing quickly uh you have to pay attention to these things because if not things kind of start blowing up or things start to not work and i think you know through those blow ups and through those failures i think uh uh yeah there's just so much that you, that you kind of realize about about yourself i think uh, so yeah i mean yes, you know, you could technically write a book but maybe you wonder <laughs> maybe one no. day <laughs> yeah i'll tell you I, i i was just when you were speaking i just just got one more idea one more thought i think uh, one thing which all of us should look at as well is that when when we are successful right when we get the success whatever we do we think that is right thing to do because it's getting us success right and it may not be it might it might get you success or it might be good but that method may not be the most optimal and nicest uh, way to do things which treats people fairly which is inclusive which fosters diversity and open communication and i think that is one thing i want to tell founders hey uh, so uh, i think uh, <clears throat> we we spoke about uh, all the reflections and stuff uh, um we spoke about your personal traits your personal journey and stuff uh talk a little bit about uh you know something that uh will be relevant for young aspired you know engineers who wants to you know path path away to become a cto or part of a founding team of a very amazing startup you can can you talk a little bit about that uh, in a in a sense that is uh some of the things that you think you know you have learned so far uh in the past life uh uh some of the kind of the major milestones that shape up uh you know some of your career i i think it's it's really uh, it's really powerful to come from you to to share some of your uh you know lesson learned is if you may and and what are the tips or or a wise words do you want to share to uh, our audience that specifically wants to build a career as awesome as you are um that two three things which i have done uh, and i i can open my heart over here so there is one one i believe in one principle of virtue by transparency uh, transparency by virtue and transparency by uh, like mandate right um and let me talk about that so transparency by virtue is like where people trust each other and they want to tell them tell each other everything and uh, and they are not afraid of getting judged um and engineering engineering culture should be transparency by by default that way by virtue but you have transparency is very important what happens in that case is that when you ask somebody why things went wrong and if you ask 15 people you will get the same answer second is the transparency by dictation um and that comes when your organization goes grows big is that you are telling them that you need to have transparency because you believe in this and that this can be any of the your tenets of your culture right and that is very important so, so i'll talk about if, if i'm talking about any young person who wants to um, go do this a good manager a good engineer a good cto uh, he should follow this path um, because if he if he puts a dictation in the like if he mandates this in the beginning people will not know why the culture is not culture does not get tra- transparency does not just created by mandate you can't be a dictator to do that right second thing which i say is hone your skill um i think a lot of people want to do it all um uh, i think it's very impossible for us to do it all we have only 24 hours out of that we have to sleep good, good sleep for 8 hours 16 hours left and then you figure out what you want to do do the maths you won't be able to do everything you can't be good at everything don't try to be good at everything and accept when you are not good at it. so i'll tell you when i and and uh, and that happens with the career as cto as well i i believe there are four kind of ctos 
Uh, one is the execution CPOs, which are early days, we're honing their skills and just executing, 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 making sure that delivering themselves. And then there are second stage, which is which is around 2017 of Gojek, which is your yeah, delivery CTO, which is like delivering things by trusting other people and getting them to do delivery. Right? Um, third is like operational CTO, which is like person getting involved with bunch of things, also getting into company's business, going for like fundraising, doing a lot of good stuff, but he's still, he's putting his technical counter. That is third kind of person. So my point is you need to be really, really, understanding that when you need to be operational CTO, don't be execution CTO because you don't, you are not required there. Your time is not required there. So make sure you hone your skills and also make sure who needs your time very much. While you love doing coding 24 by seven or while in early days, perfectly fine. And if you love doing managing people 24 by seven in early days, perfectly not fine. So that is the second thing I will say that you need to figure out where you are and choose and delegate. Um, eventually, if you are if you are if you are a good CTO, you will end up delegating almost everything. That means you need to be always learning. Whatever stage you are, please learn all the time, and also please read books. Books are the lessons or failures of other people, which are summarized and given to you. So if you if you read those books, people have done this or succeeded. They are giving you your thought process. Always good to have as many thoughts as you can, um, like. Uh, uh, when I became parent, I realized the pain of people having a stand up at 6 p.m. Because I need to home, be home with my, my kids. And you should do a stand up at 6 p.m. It's good. So go read the books. And those books tell you what it is all about, right? Um, so I think, I think those are the three lessons I would say. Uh, hone your skill, understand and frame where you are and what you need to do. And third, learn. Learn all the time.